All right, today we're taking a look at this solar battery bank from Giga 30 plus. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe that's the model. And we've got some information on the back, but not much. I will put a pic of the back of the box on screen now for anybody who wants to look at that. So if you're interested, pause the video right here. Inside the box, we get some kind of gift card, paperwork, nah. The battery bank itself, which this thing is pretty beefy. This thing's pretty heavy. I'm actually, I've had one of these before and uh, it was nowhere near this big. This thing is quite a hoss. It does have the solar bank here on top. It's got a power button and it looks like it's got a charge to it already. This unit also includes a micro USB charging cable, but it does not include a charging brick. On the front of the unit, we've got what looks like a flashlight. We've got a lightning port for iPads, iPhones, things like that. We've got a micro USB. We've got USB type C and three full size USB ports. If we tap the power button once, the unit powers on. And if we long hold the power button, the flashlight comes on. Long holding again, shuts the flashlight off and then we can and then we can long hold to shut the unit off again doing a long hold with the unit shut off turns the flashlight on and flashlight only and then another long press shuts the flashlight off as loath as I am to ever read product paperwork here we do have a diagram of the unit and the specification for which port is what with the uh, charging amps for each port. So according to these specifications, the battery capacity is 30,000 milliamps. Every charging port on this unit is five volt, 2.1 amp. So this should be enough to power a Raspberry Pi 3. We're gonna test that out. I'm also going to put the solar panel to the test here. I've had one of these before, not something this thick and beefy. It was really more half the thickness of this thing, um, but it had a built-in solar panel, and the solar panel on that thing that I had previously was not very good. So I'm gonna put this one through the ringers, but I don't have much hope for this solar panel. I think these solar panel chargers are more of a gimmick than anything else. And now it's time for some real world use scenarios. I had no doubt in my mind that this device would power a Raspberry Pi 3, but I had no faith that it would power a Raspberry Pi 4 whatsoever. To my surprise, it not only powered the Raspberry Pi 4, but it powered the Pi 4 under normal stress for a very long time. I powered up the Pi 4 and just opened up its browser and started looping YouTube videos. I recorded the process so that I could go back and not only see if there were any issues with power, but also to see exactly how long this Pi 4 would run off of this battery bank. For this test, I made sure that the Raspberry Pi would not go to sleep or kick on a screensaver, or anything like that during the monitoring process. I honestly didn't know what to expect. I considered an hour, two hours, maybe four hours under the most optimistic conditions. All of those milestones came and went. I eventually had to go to bed. I checked the progress the next morning and sure enough, the Pi 4 was still running. I had to go to work, so I let the recording continue. When I got home, the battery bank was finally fully dead. So I checked my recording to see when the screen went blank and drum roll please, this Giga power bank powered the Raspberry Pi 4 for approximately 13 hours and 18 minutes. Holy sh**! Wow! Color me impressed. So I fully recharged the power bank and used it over the course of the following week to charge up several devices that I use regularly. And the plan was not to recharge the power bank until it was completely dead again. In this time, I was able to fully recharge my phone, a Samsung Galaxy A01, four times. I fully charged two GoPro batteries and finally brought an Osmo Pocket to a little over half charge before the battery bank fully died. Needless to say, that's quite a bit of juice. The trade-off for a battery bank with this capacity is that it can take a pretty long time to charge. I did two full rechargings and it takes around four hours to completely charge the bank. I recharged it the first time with a Samsung phone charger and the second time with an iPad charging brick and the results were approximately the same. 
Now as far as solar charging goes, it went exactly as I expected it would. The small solar panels on these portable power banks just don't provide enough juice to confidently rely on them as a viable energy source. I had a pretty bright sunny day, and I left the bank out in the sunlight on my deck for about 10 hours, after which time some trickling of a charge had been built up, but not much. It might be usable to work in addition to a normal wall charging if you are outdoors a lot, but personally, I wouldn't count on the solar charger to save my life in an emergency situation. And on a side rant, with the environmental efficiency of the manufacture of solar panels, my conscience would rest a lot easier with a device that just drops the solar gimmick completely. And believe me, I'm not bashing solar energy. Solar is absolutely fantastic, but it takes an efficiently built solar system to be worthwhile to make it a truly green energy source. So to wrap this video up, the pros and cons of this device are as follows. The pros, it has power for days. It's extremely well built with a built-in flashlight, and I could see where this device would be a fantastic bring along for camping. And the cons? That gimmicky solar panel. But that's about everything, so I'm going to wrap this video up. Leave a like if you liked it. Thanks for watching. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.